Hello and welcome to the Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem podcast. Podcast about monsters, mayhem, folklore, and the tales behind them, and the mayhem they cause in the modern day world. I'm Silver, and our co host this evening. Chaotic. Nope, <laughs> it's me, Mondi. <laughs> as well as. Uh, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> uh, it's Super Mage. And uh, Chaotic is not here at that moment. And no, she did not quit like she always claims to have. She is currently raising money for the F Cancer charity. Yeah, we'll, on her we'll see stream. if we get her to quit. <laughs> I mean, being on with me for 50 episodes and she still hasn't quit, I doubt she will. <laughs> he has a point there. I don't know. <laughs> you grew up with us. We're pretty persuasive. Yeah, but... Except in D&D. Well, this is episode 51. And this is a special silver demon mage episode, but we are not talking about a silver demon mage. We are talking about another demon that is also a mage or Buddhist. Something like that. He has a stick. He does lots of things, but he does like his stick. His stick grows. Technically, it shrank. It does shrink and it does grow. Mm-hmm. It's like a power pole. And he beats the people with it. Wow. That's called assault. <laughs> <laughs> Mondi, who are we talking about today? Since you told us, pick the topic. Um, That would be... Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, as some other folks may call him. Unless you watch Naruto, then it's that the Monkey King there is Enma. Well, did you guys do much research beforehand? I did some. I did a good amount. I read Journey to the West when I was younger. But it was also, it's like 2,000 pages, so it's all gone. Isn't it like 70 or 80 some chapters? Yeah, it's the book itself is like it's two whole parts. The one I read. I did more dabbling on where to find Wukong in animes and like other movie types. Because storytelling is not my strong suit. Well, I guess I'll give us the background or, or the history of Sun Wukong history, lore, that little bit of rundown, and you guys can interject whenever. I object! Overruled. Well, Sun Wukong comes from Chinese mythology, mainly known from his role in Journey to the West, as Super Mage said. He is a trickster god, sometimes also seen as a demon. Sun Wukong is a monkey. Mainly seen, usually depicted as a macaque. Macaque? Macaque. Uh, Before his awakening with his powers and such. He is known to have a short temper, proclivity to being angry, and being impatient. He was born from a rock. So this rock, the wind blew on this rock, this monkey fell out, and all these other elements kind of formed together to form Sun Wukong. And when Sun Wukong then opened his eyes, uh, golden lights shot out of it, which surprised the Jade Emperor, who is like the ruler of all the celestial body gods that were in the clouds. And he kind of looked down and seen Sun Wukong, but seeing it just being a monkey, he didn't think that it could be him, so he just kind of left him alone. (laughs) That's the ultimate, not my monkey, not my circus. He (laughs) just was like, I don't care. (laughs) 
which was the Jade Emperor's first mistake. Yeah, that's a fuck up. Because Sun Wukong would later come around to uh, be kind of a pain in his ass. Well, after he got formed, he ended up joining a troop of monkeys that were local to his mountain. And he ended up becoming their leader because the monkeys wanted to play a game. Whoever could make it to the source of a waterfall first could become the leader. And Sun Wukong just jumped right in, made it to the source and made it back. And from then on, from then on, he became known as the Handsome Monkey King. The idea that this group of monkeys elected their leader by who was the most impulsive and made the dumbest decision <laughs> is so <laughs> fitting. Swimming to a waterfall isn't that dumb. It, it's pretty dumb. Uh, it's pretty dumb. Oh. But it shows his strength, though. <laughs> Of course, if Mbaos would have tried before him, it would have been a lot less monkeys to lead. <laughs> Every one of them would be dead. <laughs> so that was probably before he was known as Sun Wukong. He was probably just known as Kong at that point, with the, with, before the monkeys renamed him. Nope, he was known as Monkey. 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 And all the other monkeys were known as Monkey. Then he became known as the Handsome Monkey King. So after... He was a handsome monkey king. He noticed that all his other fellow monkeys were aging and dying of old age, and he wasn't. Because I guess he was aging slower. So he decided to take a trip off his little mountain island. And he ended up reaching humanity. And he's seen people walking around, naked monkeys, naked hair, or hairless monkeys walking around. He ended up beating up somebody, taking their clothes, and then he learned how to blend in with humans. Till he found a teacher that would be able to teach him Buddhist. Or he found a temple with a great sage in it. And the great sage was an immortal great sage. He waited and pestered this great sage for a while until the great sage finally took this monkey in as a disciple. And Sun Wu, that's when... He got the name Sun Wukong from this great sage. Hmm. This is also where Sun Wukong learns martial arts, magical spells, 72 earthly transformations, which there's two versions of his transformations where they're like perfect transformations or there's transformations, but he still has a monkey tail. I like it. <laughs> and also... He learned his first bout of immortality. He learns the a breathing technique that grants him immortality. So he just breathes and he's immortal? That's my favorite thing about his story and about Journey to the West is they, and a little bit of knowledge ahead, they uh, give him like eight different forms of immortality. <laughs> they essentially are just <laughs> yes. like, you want some cheese on that sandwich? You want some more cheese on that sandwich? <laughs> this cheese prevents you from having other sites of cheese. <laughs> There's like immortality from aging. There's immortality from weapon damage. There's immortality from uh, diseases. I think that first one was disease. The breathing technique. It was something to like it was like to fight off poison or like mind control or something like that. Uh, I don't think it was poison. I think it was his uh, aging. Mm. but he could still be killed okay but so with uh with this he left the great the temple and the great sage and went back to his island and with the support of the forest monkeys that then sung wukong trained with martial arts and weaponry the monkeys became a large army he decided that he wanted himself a stronger weapon so where else would monkeys go to get weapons they decided to go visit the Dragon King, and they kind of beat up the Dragon... He beat up the Dragon King, and, <laughs> and he, the Dragon King offered him pick any of these weapons, but then Sung Wukong knew that they weren't the best weapons. The best weapon they knew of was his eight-ton staff that was holding up the sky. 
So when Sun Wukong went over to it, he touched it and was able to lift this eight-ton staff up. He said, yeah, this is, this is pretty good, but it's still unwieldy. Shrink. And the staff shrank to a usable size. <laughs> and then the sky fell that day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the day the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the day Sun Wukong started attacking. Yeah. Because he just went ahead and went... He went ahead and started to go to the Dragon King's brothers, the other sea oh. dragons, oh and boy. he just he beat them up one after another. He gained a phoenix feathered cap. He gained cloud walking boots and a golden chainmail shirt. Mm. All these magical treasures from them. Sounds like he just became a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was kind of just ta- you know kind of taking whatever he wanted to. So after he got all these items. Uh, he gained the attention of Hell. Yang Wang, when one of the kings of Hell came to collect Wu Kong's soul. Oh boy! Uh, so the, the the these guys from Hell were able to just walk right past all the uh, monkey army and just grab Wu Kong and take him down to the underworld, mm-hmm. which I think in Buddhist is eighteen layers of Hell. Yeah. So took him down there and wukong's like sure i'll go with you guys my or no wukong's like no my name's not in the book of life and death and he ended up tricking the kings of the underworld in order for him to look at the book of life and death so when he looked at the book and book of life and death and he was able to quickly scribble out the name his name and the name of several of his monkey generals and other monkeys on the islands' names, oh, which no. literally made these monkeys and him more immortal, because his book, his name was not in the book of life and death, so he could not be taken. Again, welcome to just stacking immortality. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wrong. There are, oh gosh, there are eight major hells. In each major hell, there are 16 smaller hells in Buddhism. So technically, if we're going to get technical, there are 122 hells. Okay. It's a lot. That's a lot of hells. It's just like layers. Kind of like his immortality. Like an onion? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like Shrek. <laughs> like Onions onion. have layers. <laughs> what about cakes? Hey, Skylines. <laughs> I do love that he was able to trick, like, that the, the King of Hell was dumb enough to be like, oh, you didn't write this. And the writer, he just grabbed an eraser real quick and just... <laughs> yeah, just, nope, it's not in here. I, I don't see it. You made a mistake. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> and uh, after they seen that his name was not in there, they kind of just kicked him out of Hell back to his body. You don't belong here. <laughs> Then with uh, Yang y- y- Yan Wang being upset about the balance of life and death being upset, uh, he made an appeal to the Jade Emperor. And the Jade Emperor felt that the best way to kind of calm uh, Sun Wukong down was to make him a god. <laughs> yes, give him more so, status. So... He gave him a title and, and gave him the ability to live in heaven. But the first job that they assigned to Sun Wukong was taking care of the Jade Emperor's horses in heaven. Mm-hmm. Which uh, worked out for a little while until the Sun Wukong figured out that this is the lowest possible position. <laughs> and he couldn't gain any, any more immortality in this position. His next job was much better. <laughs> So he uh, rebelled against the heavens and kind of left. So to prove that he was uh, needed more, he started to, he just left and the King, Jade Emperor sent people after him and then they beat him, or he beat them up. He beat up all this uh, gods he sent after him until finally the Jade Emperor went back down. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry for pretty much, this is me ad-libbing, but he says, okay, didn't mean to send you the lowest position. How about this? How about you guard the Peaches of Immortality? (laughs) (laughs) 
That's so funny. That should be a move. That just sounds peachy. <laughs> That's oh my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> it's it, it's the epitome of having someone who has murdered a bunch of people be like, hey, why don't you guard this gun store? Yes. <laughs> uh, Very dumb. So you you leave the monkey that's in charge that's looking for mortality in charge of the uh, peaches that are they peaches? Yeah, they were peaches. Yeah, in charge of the peaches of immortality. You know what he does? He eats the peaches. He eat, and these peaches only grow every three thousand years. Yes. Oh, that's plenty of time. So after eating these peaches during about the same time, he heard that the uh, emperor was throwing a big party for his wife, and Sun Wukong knows that he wasn't invited. But you know how he knows he wasn't invited? Was his name not in the book? He was made to hand out all the invites to all the other gods. Well, <laughs> yep, that's the way to find out. <laughs> I was going to say, they just started being a major, like, dick to him. It's like when your little brother tries to, like, come play with you, and you're just like, nah, why don't you, why don't you, go, why don't you go do my laundry? Yeah, so on the one of the gods that he was supposed to hand out to him, he beat the god up and hit him. Then Sun Wukong transformed into this god with his invite. Ended up attending the party and hearing all the other gods talk talk smack about him. He ate all the he ate a bunch of the food and drink from this immortal party, which also another stage of immortality is yeah. eating heaven's food and drinking uh, heaven's ale. He drank all the heaven. Yeah. It's the heavenly alcohol. Yeah, I think they used wine instead of ale. Yeah, I think they used ale. I think it was wine. You're right. So uh, being so hurt by these other gods, Wukong spoke out at the party and declared himself the great sage equal to heaven he also made an enormous banner just to taunt the jade emperor yeah he did that says that basically said fuck the jade emperor and then he left heaven he went back down to his monkey island you know generations later besides those couple monkeys that he struck from the book of life and death they were still there my favorite part about this portion of the story is he literally goes down like back to earth and then just fucks off like nothing's gonna happen just, yep. <laughs> everything is fine I'm gonna go back to living my life no repercussions what could possibly go wrong literally <laughs> what could possibly go wrong one day in the heaven equals one year in the regular world is one transition of time I seen mm -hmm. something like that these gods started to send people back after Sun Wukong to capture him and put him in prison for ruining the party, stealing all the peaches. There is a gourd, apparently, that also had immortality peel pills in them. And he also ate all those before he left heaven. It was like eight gourds worth of immortality pills. I don't remember that. That's crazy. So that's another stack of immortality. He's, he's doing it, man. And they were able to capture him one time. I forget how they captured him, but they captured him, took him back up to heaven, and took him to a D D immortalization crucible and just started burning him for like 48, 48 years or something. It was just like a continuous burning of him, trying to burn the immortality out of him. But it didn't work. I'm trying to remember how they captured him. Cause I if I, I thought it was some I thought it was something when I read it, it was so stupid. It wasn't like they tricked him. Mm -hmm. Was it a banana under a box with the pull string? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was something like that. Like, it was something dumb. I don't know if it was some sort of ring that just kind of stuck around him. But anyways, after this crucible, he ended up escaping again and going back down to his mountain. Where then the Jade Emperor went and got a hold of Buddha, the Buddha. And the Buddha went down to confront Sun Wukong and challenged him. The Buddha challenged Sun Wukong that if Sun Wukong could leap out of Buddha's palm, mm -hmm. he would be able to go free, do whatever he wants. So Sun Wukong got on his palm and tried to jump out of it. He flew to the edge of the universe where he found five pillars holding up the sky and being there, he took a marker and kind of wrote Sun Wukong was here on one of the pillars <laughs> and proceeded to take a leak on one of the pillars. <laughs> then when he jumped back to the Buddha, he's like, I have escaped you. The Buddha's like, look again, look at my middle finger. And he 
showed Sun Wukong where it said Sun Wukong was here. Mm -hmm. And there's a pot, there is a puddle of pee in his hand. Is that you had not escaped my palm. Yeah, the pillars represented his fingers. Buddha uh, was enlightened that his reach covered everything. So then Buddha uh, decided to just trap Sun Wukong underneath a mountain for 500 years. Just once you once you stay there. <laughs> and then that's where when the story of Journey to the West starts. Yeah, I was going to say that's just kind of the background story for a lot of it. And there's like 81 different little mini stories with him in it for mm -hmm. the uh, Journey to the West. Oh, here it is. Um, Sun Wukong, he threw uh, Lao Tzu through the Jade Ring, a diamond Jade Ring at Wukong from behind and hit him in the head and knocked him out. That's what it was. <laughs> well, I guess you're immortal to most damages, but you're not immortal to yeah. being knocked out. And that let his nephew Erlang uh, pick him up and bring him up to heaven. K.O. I was, I knew it was something stupid, but I was like, what in the heck is this? Sneak a deck. Yeah, and then there's all the different stories of him, like, that he does throughout the actual journey to the West portion. I don't know about you, but being trapped under a mountain for 500 years sounds like it would be a real pain in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in order to actually get free... This Buddhist monk called Tang Zhang, Tang San Zhang, found the Monkey King and offered to release him mm -hmm. on the condition that he would repent and become the monk's disciple, which he eventually agreed upon. Mm -hmm. But the monk tricked Sun Wukong into putting on a golden headband because he told him, hey, don't put this on. <laughs> this is Sun Wukong proceeded to then put it on. He 100% just went, fuck you, I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> And then he was able to do a chant in it, uh, was able to calm or uh, control Sun Wukong because it put him in so much pain. Oh, so it would like tighten around his head if he was bad and like mm -hmm. loosen if he was yeah. good. It was like a collar, yep. basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a uh, couple stories of Sun Wukong being like challenging a group of monks to a decapitation contest. <laughs> Where you would, they decapitated him, then his head popped right back up. It's like, haha, see, I win. But the monk started to do it. He chanted a mantra and they cut his head off. And before his head could be reattached, per the mantra's condition, Sun Wukong had one of his hairs turn into a dog and take the head and just run off with it. <laughs> so that he won the competition that way. And all like when you start getting into the stories of Journey to the West, like because like you said there's like I think it's seventy something or eighty something, they start just getting wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's kind of the beginning section. We might have to do a continuation with the stories and stuff. Sun Wukong Part Two. Because <laughs> <laughs> then we could do where we all like pick our pick a Journey to the West story. Yeah. Maybe Chaotic will grace us with her presence. <laughs> Very likely. So, the media. This is where Mondi did his research. We think. Surprisingly. Like I said, I only did it in the, like, the animes and movies that it popped up under. We'll get the main one out of the room. It's uh, Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Shock, gasp. Oh, no. What? I would have never I thought, guessed. I thought it was Luffy Sun from One Piece. Well, I mean, <laughs> technically, if anything, it'd be Ace. <laughs> well, if spoilers for those who aren't up to date on One Piece. Oh yeah, <laughs> his uh, Luffy's Devil Fruit is not actually the Gum Gum Fruit. It is the Sun God Fruit. The Nico Nico. Sun God and Nika. Yeah. Which kind of acts and seems very familiar to Sun Wukong, in a way. Hey, I was going to watch all 1,000-something episodes of that show. I'm mad. <laughs> oh, darn. Uh, but back to Dragon Ball Z and Goku's similarities. Besides Sun Goku and Sun Wukong be pretty much meaning the same thing. <laughs> 
Goku's a Saiyan, which is a monkey race. He can transform into a giant monkey. They transform into he a Zaru. Had... Which yeah. I believe means, does not mean great. It means great ape, I believe, right? I believe so. He also had to fly a Nimbus and a Power Pole, which is similar to Sung Wukong's uh, cloud walking boots, plus his ability to somersault and fly pretty much. And the fly, he had the Power Pole, which was like his staff. And as much as Goku fights, he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. He's even facing gods now. I was going to say, once you start getting into like Dragon Ball Z territory, he starts going up and talking to gods and tricking gods when he meets like Kami and King Kai and everything. Beerus. He went to hell and came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or HFIL. HFL? Damn it to Hiffle. Hiffle? Hiffle. <laughs> I forget, what does that uh, stand that for? There's also the Super Saiyan 4 transformation where he kind of almost resembles the monkey style of yeah. the way their hair is growth. Yeah, he gets more furry. Uh, I just remembered Hiffle in Dragon Ball stands for Home of Infinite Losers. <laughs> H-I-F-L. Yep. Well, the main thing that Sun Wukong is in, too, is also the Journey, uh, Journey, Journey to the West movies mm -hmm. and the book. I think the book was wrote in like 1600s. Well, if there's 2,000 pages to this book, then I believe it. Uh, he is also in Ruby, like we kind of discussed off recording earlier. He is in New Age of Heroes, League of Legends, Warriors Orochi, Kung Fu Panda, The Pause of Destiny, Fortnite. He's got his own skin in Fortnite. Uh, of course he does. Same place that Goku skin came from. <sighs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that game. The pain. There is also set to come out this year in 2023 a new video game starring Sun Wukong called Black Myth Wukong. Hmm. And it looks good. I'm looking at you. Interest has been peaked. Yes. Ooh, that does look really good. It does. We'll post it in Discord once this releases so you guys can see it. And then we're all going to get together and play that game. I don't know if it's multiplayer. I think it's single player as I'm looking at it. Let's start. We get to be multiplayer, but it's only up to four people. You can be Tang Zhang, <laughs> uh, Wukong, Piggy, and the Ogre. Yeah. Sand Ogre. The whole group of four that traveled, or five. Because Tang, Tang Zhang's horse was actually a dishonored water dragon. Yeah, you got it. It was a... Um... Yeah, they call it a dragon horse. Yeah. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your family. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Uh, also, a, another spoiler for the end of Gods of High School. Uh, the main character is Sun Wukong. Gasp. It's been out for a while now. It's the, <laughs> the Webtoons comic has been out for even longer. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that's been spoiled for infinite amount of time at this point. Wukong is a very uh, influential Chinese mythological god, demon, deity. I've, I've seen him call a demon and a demon. Or, I've demon seen him call a, demon? a god <laughs> and a demon. Mainly a monkey demon. Yeah. When it's like, I remember they started doing, there was a big craze of it for a while because I remember they did it in Overwatch. They started putting in a bunch of like skins for it. And it became Did like they a, do big a monkey king yeah. skin. Yeah, Winston has a monkey king skin. Um, I think Roadhog has the pig. Um, Reinhardt has the ogre. Oh, May is the um, the girl from the underworld. There was one more, but I can't think of it. It might have been um, Zenyatta was Lao Tzu, maybe. Yeah, well this this article here says Winston is the monkey king. Roadhog is mm -hmm. the king's apprentice, Zubaji, the pig mm -hmm. monster. That's the pig deep. Mean Yeah. Yeah, that, they call him Piggy. Zinyata is based mm -hmm. off Wukong's Kong's Buddhism master Tang Za Zhang. And Reinhardt is dressed as the river monster Sha He Sheng. And they did a second round of it too. Reinhardt got a second skin. Um 
it looks like Hanzo got a skin as the king. Um, and then Yada got another skin as a, I think he was supposed to be Buddha. Yeah, I think they were for like Lunar New Year and everything. You guys got anything else? I don't think so. It's a really cool story. Uh, kind of, we didn't really touch on, I can kind of run him back. Run back I guess we did kind of touch on Wu Kang's abilities, didn't we? The immortality in the mm, superhuman. So, yeah. Kind of recap before Mayhem kicks up. Superhuman strength, <laughs> the ability to transform into 72 different animals and objects. Each one of his hairs can transform separately. He can transform other people. Uh, he can magically manipulate wind, water, and fire. He has the ability to split himself into like a combined body of three sets of arms, three sets of heads. And three. he can split his staff into three. So each one of them wields one. Easily the weirdest power. Uh, he's able to fly, quote, as it is pretty much just, it's called cloud walking, but it's pretty much flying. Isn't but he too. From One Piece? <laughs> pretty it's much. Fa- it's falling with style. <laughs> In order to do this, he has to somersault. It said that when he somersaults, he can, it moves really quickly. Like it only took him to get to the end of the universe in less than a second. Or it's like a, a very large number of kilometers. He, I think it's like circling the Earth four times. Jesus. With one, with one somersault. What the fuck? So it's pretty much flying. It's like flight in DVZ or Superman. It's just a jump. It's not actually flying. Oh yeah, that much. I always, I always hated that. <laughs> he's not flying; he's jumping. It's like, bruh, that's that's a really strong fucking jump. He jumps with style. Okay, knowing this, what do you think Mayhem would bring across? I feel like he'd be above the Tarask if we're looking at a meter wise, because he would just go ape on everything. When he can change, because they talked about it when he was, um, after the Jade King got mad at him, he changed his size. He became like a mon, like over the size of a mountain. Like he can change his size to whatever he needs to be. And his, I believe his suit, his strength scales with him. So at that point, you can just pick planets up. <laughs> See, I'm on the opposite end where I don't think he's quite as bad as the Tarask because the Tarask. <laughs> is animalistic in his instincts for destructions. While Sun Wukong, he had targets. He was targeting immortality and the guys that were stronger than him, and mostly self-defense. Now, some of the stories in the Journey to the West are a little bit different. Yeah. (laughs) But. But I think it's also like, I look at it if you're, it's like a Pokemon that's like a level 100. So it's not going to listen to you, but it's it's four moves are like earthquake, fire blast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting there. It's like give me a reason. Well, Kong's yeah, literally the had, avatar. <laughs> yeah, he has the possi- strong possibility to destroy the world, but I think he's smart enough, and with his Buddhist training, that uh, spoilers for Journey to the West. The, Book from the 1600s, but he <laughs> does breach enlightenment. <laughs> so I don't think he'll actually be rampaging or as no. bad because he fixed his ways, his arrogance, his anger. A book from the 1600s. <laughs> In this day and age, though, there really is no enlightenment. Everyone's, if some people don't like something, they're going to go after it. Well, he's going to be sitting there meditating, being all peaceful. Fucking army going to show up and just, oh, look, there it is. Rocket launcher. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if this was before that time, before the whole being trapped under a mountain for 500 years, uh, if, if the if the U.S., if any country's army went after him first, he would just kind of just wipe them all out. Yeah. Then he'd continue on and just destroy the rest of the country. Just says payback. Like, look what I can do. <laughs> He'd be like, an eye for a village. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You see this? Now you don't. <laughs> yeah, 
you see the stick here. It's the size of a toothpick. Throw it up in the air. Now it's the size of a mountain. <laughs> and now you got the Grand Canyon. <laughs> look at me. Now look back at you. Now look back at me. Now look back at you. Now you're dead. <laughs> Is that? I wonder if that's where Teddy Roosevelt got his saying. Carry a big stick. <laughs> could maybe be. very well could speak be speak quietly carry a big stick yeah because that, that's the problem Sun Wukong can think he is very edumacated he knows what he could go after to like so he I, is to a point because like Matt said he has targets so he does well up until a point and then once he sets his eyes on a target or like he gets mad or you know he gets his emotions he is like I mean, for lack of a better term, he's a pissed off teenager at times. Like, <laughs> he gets blinded by his emotions. He gets blinded by desire and things like that. He's not – he's immortal, but he's not imperfect. So he pretty much goes tunnel vision as soon as he finds a target. Oh, absolutely. I would say so, yeah. Hurry. But another thing that would be bad, his ability to train monkeys mm. to mm. become masters of weapons and martial arts. I mean, in some countries, monkeys are already a large problem with stealing motorcycles and stealing like knives and purses and stuff. That. Don't forget stealing. Is, I think children. it's. I think it's Costa Rica. They have a really big problem with monkeys taking children, I and they'll Taiwan find they'll find like well? maybe they'll find like dead corpses in the woods because they'll just take children. <laughs> Not the yeah, no children. Thing, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, another thing I've seen is that they're learning to use stilts. Jesus Someone was teaching a bunch of monkeys to use stilts. Why? And they're, they're, all, they're all just walking the around. Jacket. They can already climb. Stop it. <laughs> I can't wait to see a monkey on stilts in a trench coat. That's all I want in life. The, the, I seen it on TikTok. It was a guy. It was they, a bunch of monkeys walking around. This one guy just stuck his foot out and tripped the monkey on the stilts, and the monkey looked around at him real angrily. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. That That's where the video cool. just cut off. So I was like, oh, "Yeah, he probably died." <laughs> like that dude dead. Oh gosh! If Sun Wukong was a D and D character, what would his class be? Monk. All of them. He's every class. <laughs> He's a monk, warlock, sorcerer, fighter. He takes no fall damage. Monk. He takes uh, no damage. Monk fighter. Yeah, gotta I, be monk I'm gonna fighter. say monk fighter multi class. Yeah. Uh, the sun soul monk, where he gets like spells, mm. plus a little bit of druid, so he can wild shape into the animals. I was gonna say he's just he's a he's a min maxer for sure. Oh yeah, he's one of those characters. He'd be one of those characters where it's just twenties across the top. <laughs> he somehow got a hold of every single magic item to boost your stats to twenties. Yeah, he get this. The cloud walking boots would be speed. The staff would be strength. Uh, the chain no chainmail shirt would be strength. Pole arm would be dexterity. Mm -hmm. uh, His headband the, would be wisdom or intelligence or both. And his, bre his, his breathing technique would be no, wisdom. Uh, Phoenix feather cap would probably. Oh, be. that's what it is. Yeah, I think his charisma though would be like his dump stat, so it, it'd be the lowest. <laughs> he could he could communicate with monkeys, but everybody else just got angry with him. I want to see him have twenties and then a four, <laughs> a negative four. He's like, "What's your modifier? Minus three. Uh, that's yeah. crazy." That guy punched a mountain, but he's super ugly. <laughs> I'm mad at him now. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just hate him. <laughs> Fight the mountain. I'm on the mountainside. Uh, I think this also brings up something really important, too. Um, <laughs> back when... <laughs> I was thinking about this as I was reviewing it. Nowadays, how would he scale up to like modern day like stories? Like modern day superheroes and things like that? Um, I think back then they just started overpowering people. They didn't realize how powerful these concepts like were. They're like, oh, he's immortal six times over. He has every type of martial arts known to man. He can use any weapon. He has a staff that's six ton that he just shrinks down. 
he can eight transform. Ton. Yeah, eight ton. He <laughs> can transform basically at will. It's like, do you realize you just keep you keep stacking shit? <laughs> well, that's like in one of the stories. Like this, this journey to the west was a story about demons and gods. Mm-hmm. There is a there is a bold demon in one of the stories that had a ring. This ring captured everything it, it could capture some wukong it captured the river it captured the god of creation god of water god of fire it just captured everything this ring did but it turned out some wukong figured out that this bowl or this rhino was the was somebody's cow that just got loose and, and stole the ring <laughs> And once this guy came down, and he's like, "Oh yeah, he's mine." He was just grabbed this guy and just took him back away to be his cow again. That's so funny. And that was it. The, it's just like he, it's, this ring and everything, so strong that he can do this. But just this one god. Does that mean this one god is stronger than the rest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just never touches on it. Yeah, it's they never touch on just how powerful like he actually is. Another piece of media that I just remembered is uh, the Death Battle series on YouTube. They did Hercules oh, yeah. versus Sun Wukong. Who won that? Uh, Sun Wukong, of course. Yeah. Because of his immortality. Well, yeah. Hercules did not have immortality. Her- uh, Spoilers. Yeah. He had, <laughs> he had some it, immortality. And then he gave it up for a woman. That was the different type of Hercules. <laughs> I wanted oh, okay. if that was coming. That, 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 that's Disney Hercules. Okay. I don't know much about like that mythos. Well, Greek Hercules, Hercules murdered hit murdered Princess Megana. His oh. Wife, okay. And his kids. Spoilers. Wasn't he just like a giant asshole? Yeah, pretty much. That's another Hercules episode later on down the road. Sounds like a fucking asshole. <laughs> Well, if you think about the Disney, Zeus was Hercules' father, and everybody hates Zeus. I, my favorite thing is they make uh, Hades the villain in that movie. <laughs> they hate the villain. <laughs> if you know anything about like that mythology, he definitely ate the villain. <laughs> he's the victim. He's probably he's probably the most level headed one in that entire like mythology. Technically, if we were going to be. Uh prudent i guess that's probably not the right word but in that mythology their villain is hera (laughs) (laughs) and a little bit artemis but artemis tricked hera into breastfeeding hercules Hmm. as mentioned back in the hydra episode yes uh anyways let's wrap this up (laughs) uh (laughs) no (laughs) <laughs> we might do a part two later on with the we'll just go through the stories maybe cover piggy and the orc yay maybe uh, i'll watch journey to the west by then maybe we'll watch yeah. that saturday it is it is discord uh, movie night saturday mm. oh yeah i won't be able to be there but okay you didn't show up last time either i listen i barely can make it on D nights <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he crashes at then, like ten. Oh my oh, god, man. I'm so sorry, y'all. Listen, <laughs> I wake up at five a.m. every day. So it is I. so hard. I was up at one something this morning. You, you have a kid. You're used yeah. to it. <laughs> I'm also older than you. Exactly. Some of us like our sleep. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'd like to say special thanks to our patrons, which is Loki, Ruby, Super Mage, who is here, Mondi, who is here, as well as Nuggies. Much appreciated. Yes, yes. And thank you guys for joining. Uh, go, Everybody should go back and check out Chaotix uh, VODs of her charity stream see everything going on keep track of her on her twitter and on a discord here and go in her comments and tell her that neclavies are useless creatures go in her comments and tell her neclavies are just loving creatures that want hugs
Okay, Mondi with the outro. Join us. Join them again next time as Silver and Chaotic explore monsters, myths, and the mayhem behind them via they remember to record and doesn't need help from the Patreons. That's about my best I can give you. Oh, yeah, check out the links in the description below to find out all the cool merch and uh, Chaotix streaming uh, <laughs> times. <laughs>